Swift error handling was introduced way back in Swift 2.0, before the open source release. With keywords try, catch, and throw, many were worried that it meant full-on C++ exceptions. But it really works like a fancy special return type for functions. There is also some compiler checking to make sure that you are properly responding to the possibility of an error. Here we see the basics of error handling. To declare an error, you conform to the Swift error type. This is typically done with an enum, where each case is a different error. You can use associated values in the enum to communicate additional error information. Any function that can encounter an error needs to be declared with throws in addition to the type it normally returns. If you call that function, it must be marked with try. Any function that calls a throwing function must also throw or handle the error in a do catch block. A catch block automatically assigns a thrown error to the variable error, although you can change the name to something else if you want. Let's try this out. Open the starter playground. Let's make a division error that we can throw. Next, let's define the function that can throw. You must try and handle the error. Let's look at another example. Here we have designed a language construct very similar to the language R, except that R doesn't actually check for type correctness. It is a function called if else, and if the test is true, it takes A, and if it is false, it takes B. It's much like the question operator, and we actually implement it using that. It is much like the turinary operator in Swift, and we actually use the turinary operator to implement it. This function uses the deferred execution trick that you learned about in advanced Swift types and operations, so it doesn't evaluate the argument until it decides it has to. But what if these expressions were failable and through errors? Do we have to write three more versions of the same function? One where the first argument throws, one where the second argument throws, and one where both arguments throw. Fortunately, there is another keyword called rethrows that helps us out. It only throws if one of the passed in closures throws. If both of the closures don't throw, then the function is considered non-throwing. Let's fix this function up so that it can handle throwing closures. First, we mark the closures throwing and the overall function as rethrows. Now we need to try both closures A and B with try. Now let's mark expensive with throws. Notice that we need a try in front of expensive and a try in front of the if-else statement for the program to compile. Also notice that in the case where A and B are simple non-throwing expressions, you don't need to mark anything with try.